Do you wonder if someone in your life is a narcissist who is a female? Are you questioning what is a female narcissist? Is this woman toxic? What's going on with her? What do they look like? What's a female narcissist? So let's talk about that. I'm going to talk about the different roles women play or women have in life and then what it looks like when they are a narcissist in those roles in life. So let's just start with the female narcissist who is a mother. Well, they're very controlling. They do not let you individuate, become your own person, have your own life, have your own experience of the things you experience in life without it being filtered through them. And then gaslit and thrown back at you or projected something else onto you. They preload all the dialogue in your life so that you believe things before they even happen, so that you do not have a chance to experience life from your own perspective, but rather you are experiencing it from what she has told you about what the thing actually is before you even experience it. Does that make sense? Like they will... Um, for instance, just make something up here. Um, you know, baseball is a really boring sport. And then you go try and play baseball. And you're like, yeah, this is boring because mom says it is because if you say anything different, then there's an argument. Because if you if you actually enjoy the thing, you have to pretend you don't enjoy it or else you aren't meeting up to her standards and you get the wrath of whatever it is because it goes against what she's told you. Or you don't even try the thing because you don't think it's worth it. Usually it's things directed at us, right? We don't think we're worth it. So okay, let's keep going. There is a conditional love with a narcissistic mother. And that goes against what we believe about what mothers are, right? We believe and feel that mothers should unconditionally love their children. It is the true, you know, a parent-child love should be the true unconditional love. Relationship love with partners, there's always conditions, there's deal breakers, there's, you know, but with a love from a mother should be not transactional like theirs is. They have a transactional achievement-based or a behavior-based love. You are living their life. In other words, you're they're living vicariously through you and therefore they love. They will shower you with love bombing in order to prove what a good mother they are, in order to prove that they are a person capable of such great love. They, it's not about you, it's about them. And you can sense it and you feel it as you grow and you can see it when you're watching it with a narcissistic mother and her child. It's disgusting. So, yeah, um, they um, they won't they won't validate you. So her emotions and her beliefs rule everything. They will not validate you having an opposing or a differing or your own unique viewpoint on things or your own unique experience with things. They will never validate you because it's all filtered through her emotions, her beliefs, her feelings, all of that. Okay. Um, if, well, what, I, what do I want to say here? They will validate in the sense sometimes if you're the golden child of telling you you're amazing. Oh, I'm so proud of you for, uh, I'm so proud of you for, I'm going to go back to a sports thing here. I'm so proud of you for what a team, for how well you handled that situation with the team. Okay, that sounds great. But coming from a narcissistic mother, what it's saying is the way you handled it was the way I said you should handle it. And therefore, I'm proud of you. <laughs> right? It isn't, wow, I know that was a hard struggle for you to just smile in the face of losing and shake that other team's hand. I know that's hard. And you did really great. What was that like for you? Not about you. It's about her, which she's taught you being projected into the world through you. Um, this is what they do. Okay. Um, so basically they take a narcissistic mother takes normal mothering things and twists it to fit her narrative. And then when it comes out, it looks like it can look like mothering. And so it's confusing. People don't realize their mothers are narcissists often until they're later in life and they've gone through multiple relationships with narcissistic people. And then they look back and go, wait a minute, I married my mom. You know, I mean, really, I married who a person just like her. So, or I was with people just like her, right? Okay. So they are belittling, even covertly. They will 
set the stage for who you are supposed to be and you have to fill those shoes. Remember that when you're a child and someone is manipulating you, it is survival to do as they say. Unless you're the black sheep, then it's survival to apologize for who you are, right? So no matter what you do around a narcissistic mother, you're in survival mode. So they're manipulative. They are unpredictable. They're nice one minute and mean the next. Or you know that the other shoe's going to drop so you're walking on eggshells and you can't predict when. Or you maybe you can pre start to predict when, but then your mind as a little person is spent worrying about mommy's moods and mommy's outbursts and mommy's meanness coming. Okay. Um, again, survival. They are, they're all about appearances. They have to look like the perfect mother, even if they're terrible. They have to have the appearance of being, you know, they will criticize other parents for things that they themselves do covertly or even overtly. They will, um, I've heard of one just not letting her child go to someone's house because she didn't like that the mother, it was something like, she didn't like the way that the mother handled a situation. And it was like the, the mother, I don't know, maybe was going through a bad divorce or something. It was getting really like, it was getting really difficult for her to, to mother for a little while. You know how it is when you're going through something and it's difficult. She didn't like the way that mother was mothering. She's not a good mother. So I don't want my kid around her kid. Well, what that other person was doing was what this mother does all the time. She just hides it. So basically, you see what I'm saying here? They twist everything and control and point fingers elsewhere so they look perfect. Yeah. Okay. They're, um, they won't give you a point of view at all. It's all, like I said, it's all filtered through their point of view. They're emotionally volatile. And they're the center of attention. Everything somehow turns back to them. Everything is about them. Even the, the friends you have, the, the things you do. Um, it's with everyone, though. It's not just with you as their child. You see it across the board. I mean, I'm such a great this. I'm so this. My friends love me for that. People think I'm so, I'm so helpful. People, you know, they will often present as... Well, there's all kinds of ways they could present. They can look like any other person, just like any narcissist can, right? But it's going to come out where you realize that everything they're doing is directed back to get attention and supply for themselves. Um, what did I say here? Um, she is a controlling of things on the outside of your life and uses grudges to motivate you. She holds grudges. She uses to manipulate you. I mean, um, she, they will hold grudges for things you've done as a child when you're an adult. And there's no, there's no pleasing them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to go on to the next, that's just some of the things of a narcissistic mother. As always, if you have ones you want to add, throw it in the comment section of the video because it helps people when they read it. It validates. Okay. Um, I will read what you guys are saying in a little bit. Uh, partners. As a partner, what's she like? The female narcissist in a romantic relationship. Well, they're attention starved. They are the center of attention. They are, um, they play the victim sometimes. There's a martyrdom to them. The mothers can do this too. I mean, honestly, this goes for all female narcissists, but sometimes it looks a little different when they're in different roles, right? So mothers may play the victim and martyr. Or well, they definitely play the victim and martyr. But what's it going to look like in a partnership is, is that you're the one who's wrong, especially when it is not especially. I hear it especially from clients who are men saying that, well, of course it's my fault. See, and the problem with that is, unfortunately, society is going to believe it before they believe him. It's an unfortunate thing, and it happens. And, and what makes me mad about that is those of us who do suffer from men, then are, it, it invalidates our, uh, what we've had done right? Because they're lying about the situation. They're actually the one who is the toxic one. And it also 
makes it seem like it is a gender based thing when it isn't narcissism is could be in either gender it isn't it isn't a gender based thing so and people are going to believe her because she's then going to play the victim she's then going to play here's the thing with narcissistic women they learn psychology and they use it and people believe it they learn the words they learn the terms they learn all of it and they will use it if you listen though they're using it wrong they're saying a boundary is actually something they want not something that is a clear need and um a clear boundary like a boundary might be no um i will not let you speak to me in a in a tone like that i will not i will not engage with it you can speak however you want i am not going to engage with you if you talk that way there's my boundary they will see a boundary as i told you to drop it off yesterday at four o'clock and you weren't here at four no that's a request that isn't a boundary <laughs> right unless they are your boss and have a are, are allowed to and for some reason control your timing that isn't a boundary that's a request so but they will twist the words is what i'm saying they will twist the terms of healthy relationship to suit their needs instead of suiting healthy relationships so when we're using terms like boundaries, what we're trying to establish with people is healthy relationship between the two people, right? We're trying to say, this is my boundary, that's your boundary. Let's find a place in the middle. With a narcissist, they're like, no, it's all about me. And so in a partnership, what does that do? It means you have none, they have it all. Um, they're jealous and um, competitive. Female narcissists in partnerships, they are overbearing, they're aggressive they triangulate a lot. Um, they totally dismiss your boundaries. They're cunning. Like I was saying, they understand the psychology of things often, and they will use it against you. Um, they use their looks. They're very, they will use their, uh, they will use intimacy against you. They will, I mean, it's all this stuff that a male narcissist will do. It's just the way they do it. I have heard of more female narcissists trying to hoover through seduction than I have of male. Of course, men do it. But I have heard of more females during the hoover coming in with, with seduction in order to hoover back. Narcissistic females as a friend. Oh, boy. Yeah, the competition's high there, isn't it? narcissistic f f friends females they like to keep you down they like to keep you beneath them and they love it when you have problems they are unreasonable with their expectations on the friendship um it's about their emotional needs they talk about themselves incessantly they talk about what they're doing who they are they um they use guilt a lot to force you out of your boundaries and to force you out of your comfort zone to do the things they want to do, to be there for them. They, uh, they blame and guilt trip. They are jealous of other females in your life. They won't let you have other, sometimes, sometimes they won't let you have other friends. They're jealous of um, any attention you get from the opposite gender or from the same gender if that's your if that's uh your life they you know whatever whatever it is where you're getting attention they're jealous of it it's all about her and your issue somehow becomes about her because she's such a good friend right it's all about her um they're draining they're so draining they can be really fun in the fun times and really draining at the same time. Like, whoa, that's a lot of energy that I just poured out. Because that's what you're doing. You're pouring into them. They're not your, you are not their primary supply, hopefully. You are their secondary supply. You're the fun times. You're the dumping ground. You're the emotional dumpster. You are, um, you know what I mean? Like, you're there to support her looking good. You, um, uh, let's see, what did I say here? They talk down about other people. They, uh, uh, they talk down your other friends or other people in your life or your partner. They um, they will attack you if you disagree. Mm -hmm. They won't take accountability. I mean, this is pretty much true of all narcissists, right? They just don't take accountability. What if it is a female coworker or boss? Someone in the workplace. This is where you start to see the mean girls. 
okay, often. You'll see them everywhere in the whole situ the whole of any female narcissist. You'll find mean girls. But this is where you get the mean girl thing, right? They're bullies. They're bullies in the workplace. They are, they give you the cold shoulder. They take credit for your work. They, um, they marginalize you. They lack interpersonal boundaries in the workplace. They will point out your flaws in covert, passive aggressive ways so that other people see you in a bad light. They will, um, they are poor listeners. They talk about themselves and their accomplishments. They are jealous of other people's success. They will, they will pretty much throw anyone under the bus to get what they want out of situations. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is dealing with the narcissist and the way the female will do it is, okay, here's one thing with female narcissists. They use the gender, okay, the way, the way we are now as a society. You can't say anything against a strong woman. And that's how they're presenting themselves. That isn't what they are. They're bullies. Okay. So especially in the workplace, they will use the fact that they're female to, how do I word this? To get away with things they shouldn't be getting away with and then throw the gender card into play so that you can't say anything about it. Even if you're another woman, you're just trying to keep me down. You're holding women back. You, you know, strong women do this. Strong women do that. No. Strong women do this without hurting everybody else. Strong women want other women to succeed. Strong women know how to share the spotlight, you know, but it's, but they'll use those terms. You see, this is what I was saying about psychology. They learn the terms, they twist what they mean, apply them to their ego and mask, and then project that out into the world. And there it's very difficult to argue with. It's very difficult to get to stand up against. If you need anything um, regarding healing from a narcissist, head over to queenbeing.com. I'm one of the life coaches over there. My name is Lise Colucci. Um, I have a group coaching that is available. If you need that, check out the info in the main description of every video. It is a uh, zoom meetings three times a week. And we talk kind of one-to-one -one in a group setting and get help for all this stuff on a more personal, uh, level and, with lots of support throughout the week. So if you need that, if you need more intensive help like that, head over there. If you need individual coaching, I'm available for that as well. So check it out in the main description of every video. Take care. Bye-bye.